Friends may not have ever become the cultural phenomenon it was without the increasingly complex and hugely popular love story between Ross Geller and Rachel Green. To celebrate the ups and downs of this rocky relationship, here are some of the best and worst Ross and Rachel moments. Although Ross tells Rachel about his feelings for her in the pilot, it takes a long time for either of them to finally grab the proverbial spoon. But all the ups and downs of their early days are worth it for the scene in which the two realize that they really are each other's lobsters. Thanks to an unearthed video from prom in season two, Rachel discovers the hidden truth about the night that her date, Chip, showed up late to pick her up. If she'd paid attention to what Ross was up to back then, however, she might have seen this happen. Rachel, ready or not, here comes your night in shining. That gesture didn't pay off at the time, but once Rachel sees his hurt and embarrassment on tape, she more than makes it up to him. The moment is near perfect, finally bringing forth their long-awaited romance with just the right note of sincerity. While Ross is mostly a thoughtful and emotionally generous boyfriend, his jealousy quickly becomes downright crippling to his relationship with Rachel. Whether or not his instincts about coworker Mark prove to be correct, Ross's incessant presence at Rachel's workplace makes the situation untenable, especially once he begins to shame her for putting work needs over their date plans. Lately, I feel like you're slipping away from me, you know, with this new job and all these new people and got this whole other life going on. The breakup that results from that disagreement is perhaps one of the most arduously dramatic moments of the entire series. No. A break from us. So Ross takes off to drown his sorrows at a bar, ending up in the arms of the fabled coffee shop girl Chloe. Despite his efforts to hide the truth the next morning, Rachel finds out, which leads to an even grimmer war of words between the two. I thought our relationship was dead. Well, you sure had a hell of a time at the wake. If not for a certain vengeful pizza order and the much-needed comic relief of the quartet hiding in Monica's room, this episode would be an easy skip-through for Ross and Rachel fans, mostly because it's uncharacteristically bleak for friends. The fact that this scene is also the beginning of the never-ending We Were On A Break chant makes it come across as even more cringeworthy. Perhaps the seminal example of these two characters' wires crossing in the best possible way happens in season five, when Ross mistakes Rachel traipsing around naked in her apartment as a personal invitation, as the two hang out at home before their trip to Las Vegas. You actually thought I wanted to have sex with you? Oh my God. <laughs> no. The next day, they spend the whole flight out west trying to embarrass each other, with Ross winning the battle by drawing on Rachel's face with permanent marker. You drew on me? Hey, you wet my pants! Once Ross realizes the prank has ruined Rachel's vacation, he tries to make it up to her by joining her for drinks in the hotel, so she doesn't suffer alone. After they run out of beer and playing cards, they venture out together and drunkenly stumble onto a chapel and get married. Hello, Mrs. Ross! The scene is classic fun, of course, but their gas-filled day after discovery of what they'd done is just as ridiculous and enjoyable. What? <laughs> Wait, hello, no, we didn't get didn't married? Get married? That's ridiculous. <laughs> this development also leads to some iconic bickering scenes about the status of their annulment, before their on-and-off romance inadvertently steals the thunder of Monica and Chandler's engagement night in season seven. Rachel clearly prefers to keep Ross at arm's length most of the time, but like clockwork, she can always be counted on to sabotage almost every relationship he has with other women, and then walk away from him again once the wrecking is complete. Such is the case in season three when he starts dating Bonnie, the feisty friend of Phoebe, who turns out to be far more intriguing than Rachel expects. You said she was bald! <laughs> was, 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 was! Okay. Rather than letting the new couple carry on with all their fun during the gang's beach trip, Rachel decides to meddle and convinces Bonnie to shave her head. She then pretends to be friendly to Bonnie while informing Ross that she maybe wants to be with him again, leading him to break up with his new girlfriend. Of course, he does just that, but as soon as he sends Bonnie on her way, Rachel pulls out an 18-page letter for him to read, which demands that he accept full responsibility for what previously went wrong between them. But if time was what you needed just to gain a little perspective… <laughs> We were on the break! Ultimately, the quick reconnect and ensuing breakup is a major letdown for those fans who want to see them reunite in a real way, without any pettiness. 
Although Ross says plenty of cringeworthy things relating to gender and sexuality throughout the series, his treatment of the male nanny in season 9 is one for the books. After interviewing a ton of potential caregivers for daughter Emma, he and Rachel are exhausted by their lack of options and become increasingly desperate to find someone who can be trusted to tend to their baby. That's when Sandy arrives and proves to be absolutely perfect for the job. He has oodles of experience, a great temperament, and most importantly, is excellent with both Rachel and Emma. But Ross simply refuses to get past the fact that Sandy is a man, peppers him with questions about his sexual preference, and taunts about his gentle demeanor. But I really believe the most satisfying thing you can do with your life is take care of a child. Okay. Upon seeing Sandy fit in too well with Rachel and his other friends, Ross insists that the guy be fired, despite his many qualifications for the job. It's a juvenile and unmodern position for him to take, which is made even worse by the fact that he proceeds to lust over Molly, the female nanny who replaces Sandy. During Friends' final episodes, Ross goes through a lot of grief as Rachel accepts a job that will take her and their child to Paris, indefinitely. To make matters worse, he's also refused a personal goodbye with Rachel, who considered their unexpected hookup as the perfect farewell. Fine, then why didn't you say something? Because it is too damn hard, Ross! Eventually, Ross decides to put aside his hurt feelings and tell Rachel that he doesn't want her to go, making it just in time thanks to Phoebe's erratic taxi driving and flight-delaying stories about missing phalanges. Unfortunately, his declaration of love comes too late, and she gets on the plane anyway. The last one then sees Ross come home to find a voicemail from Rachel as she experiences a real-time realization that she loves him too. And when the tape cuts off as she tries to get off the plane, this happens. Oh my god, did she get off the plane? Did she get off the plane? I got off the plane. After so many misconnections between these two, many of which were set around airports, it feels pretty poetic that their story is bookended by one last flight. And seeing both Ross and Rachel decide to finally commit to one another for good is an intensely satisfying ending for the show. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite stars are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.